Um, ta da! I was on a talk show recently, and the uh, host asked me, said, What do you think about the dope problem? And I said, Definitely, I feel we have too many dopes. Yes. <laughs> no question about it. Uh, that's why we have a drug problem, I really feel, you know, because, like, everybody has access to drugs, and we're all kind of just dopey, you know, we're just human beings, little protoplasm walking around, shaking hands, how are you, Phil? Give me a piece of lettuce, you know. <laughs> no real big thing. We're just kind of dopey folks, and we have all these drugs available to us. You know, that's why there's a drug problem, man. There's all those drug stores, right? Every three or four blocks, there's a big sign. Drugs. <laughs> Open all night. Drugs. <laughs> we deliver. Drugs. <laughs> Cut rate. Drugs. It's the biggest thing on their sign. Cosmetics, sundries. Drugs. <laughs> and the pharmacist is always stoned. You ever notice that? <laughs> Check his eyes. He's experimenting with something. <laughs> How come he can never fill a prescription right away, you know? Really, he always gives you that, better come back in about an hour. Man. I can't even read the bastard, you know? It's no accident that we're drug-oriented, really. Uh, the drug companies got us that way, and they'd like to keep us that way. I mean, that's a simple thing. They start you early with the oral habit. The little orange-flavored aspirin for children. Two in the mouth, son. Something wrong with your head? Two in the mouth. Remember that? Head, mouth. These are orange. There'll be other colors later on. <laughs> Even name it after a saint to throw you off, you know? <laughs> it's all right, son. Two in the mouth. St. Joseph. <laughs> Remember Papa Chucks? Papa Chuck! <laughs> oh, you know. Guy goes to a dance when he's 13. How's your head? Two in the mouth, man, you know. Mom's got her fix. Coffee freaks running around. Alcohol. You know, that's the biggest, of course, and most abused. And incredible. 50% of all traffic deaths. No, yes, that's about 25,000, right. 50% of traffic deaths. 40% of all arrests, traceable. 50% of all first admissions to mental institutions, traceable to alcohol. And then, of course, there's uh, diabetes gout, high blood pressure, heart disease, insanity, divorce. I always say, drink up, Shriners, whenever I see a couple of them. You know? <laughs> when they talk about drugs, they don't talk about all of them. That's the problem. They don't mention coffee. <laughs> the low end of the speed spectrum, I grant you. But there are coffee freaks, and they're walking around, nobody, you know, worried about it or anything. Mrs. Olson never tells you about that mild speed lift, you know? Because she, she's shooting freeze-dried Folgers, right? <laughs> but you've seen the coffee freak in the office, haven't you? The guy who drops eight or nine cups every morning. Always in a good mood. Hi, how are you? Warm that up for you? Okay, yeah, hi, how are you? Hey, good to see you. Always in a nice mood, fine. Until the coffee urn breaks, man. And he's the first cat over. What do you mean broken, man? Well, plug it in, man. Turn it around. Never mind, man. Put some water in. Holy shit, man. Turn the car around. Man. And then he goes out and scores, because he's the one who's hooked. Right? I know it's just a dopey example, but that's the beginning of it. Then you have housewives and the diet pills. Mom found out there's a lot more than dieting in those pills, man. Help you grind your teeth and feel great, too. <laughs> Keep it on the phone a lot. Hi, how are you, Marge? Anyway, look at that. Where are you? Where are you going, Mom? Shopping at midnight? Well, they're open. You know, never mind. I'll see you later, man. Go, go, go. <laughs> and athletes, athletes got into uppers. College athletes, the right wing's last line of defense on campus, and they're doing amphetamines. Remember when being up for the game used to be kind of a spiritual thing? <laughs> Now, man, you up for the game? Went up all week, man. <laughs>
are still on prescription. You still need a note to get laid, you know. <laughs> so bad. Not only do you need a note, you got to go to one guy to get the note, and then you got to bring it to another guy. You know? Everybody's in on it, you know. Ladies must feel silly going in there. Here's my note. <laughs> That's what you're doing at home, eh? <laughs> well, we're uh, keeping a record of it here in the store. And, uh, late at night, I read them. <laughs> well, someday birth control pills will come off prescription. And uh, when they do, they'll need those cute little catchy names that the patent medicines have. They'll sell birth control pills, you know, in the corner drugstore. There'll be one-cent sales at Rexall. There'll be attractive little cartons, merchandising campaigns, a special Christmas package, and uh, they'll be right up there with the Shreff's two-cent mints at the cash register, you know. Take your change in birth control. And they'll need those cute little names, names which describe what the product does. Names like, well, we have so many patent medicines today, Sleepies, no dose, Dentu Grip, Orifix. Sounds a little freaky, that one. I don't know. <laughs> Listen, may I have an aura fix? <laughs> Not without a note, hell no. <laughs> Someday birth control pills will need names like Pregnot. <laughs> Doctors prefer Embryno. <laughs> Here's one for the ladies. Nary a carry. <laughs> Something lofty and poetic, nay, family way. Something earthy and crude, mom bomb. Something for the youngsters, junior miss. Here's a real man's product, inconceivable. Mommy not, fetus fail, kitty kill, papa stopper, whatever you want. Womb broom, humpty dumpty, you know. They're clever guys. I wouldn't be surprised if they come up with a birth control pill that doesn't work all the time. We call it Baby Maybe. <laughs> Available in the six pack, the sex pack, and the handy shack pack for you weekenders. <laughs> one for home, one for office, and one for the glove compartment, guys. And don't forget to save those wrappers. <laughs> Remember that? You always save 60 wrappers and get some azalea seeds. <laughs> Here's a phone call that'll never take place. A common phone call that will uh, never occur again once birth control is universal. Once everyone has a way to plan, no bachelor will ever have to fear this phone call again. And they fear it. So do married men. It's a scary call if you're fertile at all. <laughs> Hello. Hello? Dave? Yeah, this is Dave. Who is it? This is Jane. Jane? Jane who? Jane. Jane Jane? Jane. You met me at a party about six to eight weeks ago. And you said I was a real good sport. Hmm. Oh, Christ, yeah. Jane. How are you, Jane? Pregnant. <laughs> and I'm going to jump out the window. Say, you are a good sport, aren't you, Jane? <laughs> it is a male sexist pig joke, really. Hey, uh, you know what I mean? I wanted to thank you very much. No kidding. Hey, thanks for being here, man. And um, and thanks for the use of your head on an early show like this. I appreciate it. Don't forget, it takes two fingers to make the peace sign, just like it takes two people to make love. When you go like this, you're jerking off. Good night, guys. <laughs>